back at it with another episode of The Works. Today we are going to end off January with another Why I Love. This one is going to be on Takashi Murakami. And if you're not familiar with him, look at some of these photos that I'm just going to cross over the screen. You may be familiar with a few of these album covers, just some examples of his best work and some of his most popular work. And now what we're going to do is we're going to break down what I love about Takashi and how his art has inspired so many other people to break through into really great collaborations and what it looks like today. So fun fact, first off about Takashi Murakami, he was rejected multiple times from art school before he even got in, but he was able to get great support through his mom to be able to finally get into art school and pay for it. That was able to help him break through. He credits art school for a lot of the great concepts he was able to work on today. When it comes to Takashi's designs and his originality, the biggest thing that stands out about him is his super flat theory and his use of the super flat. Now, what super flat is, is a style that takes away from more of a traditional flat look, and it applies two-dimensional imagery to Japanese art and culture, more specifically with manga and anime graphics. And you sure have seen a lot, not only in this background that we've got here, but in some of these pieces that I'll show through here. But there's a lot more to Takashi Murakami than just a pretty flower. Now, what do I mean by that? Takashi Murakami has a lot of really amazing collaborations that he's been able to make. And he's been able to be called upon as a director or a creative designer to some of the biggest names in music. To start with, we'll go look at Kanye West. With Kanye West, Takashi Murakami first met him through his mother, Donda, when they all met together in Japan. Kanye apparently was very starstruck by meeting him that he didn't really know what to say. And when it comes to someone of that stature, you can understand why. This man is referred to as the Andy Warhol of Japan. And if you know Andy Warhol, that is a pretty high regard. Now, with graduation, obviously he was able to have that really great album cover, The Bear, that was a shooting out of the cannon as graduated. But there's a lot more to that. There's also a really great video that was directed by Takashi for Good Morning, which was that whole concept that Kanye West made. If you like, I leave the description in the comment section below if you want to check that out. Really interesting, really great imagery and really nice vibrant colors that he added in. Another reason that people love Takashi is his ability to keep up that vibrance while allowing us to touch on the Japanese coach culture. Fast forwarding from there, he was also able to break into a lot of great popularity again with Kanye West, now as a collaboration with Kid Cudi, with Kid See Ghosts. Now, that album cover, also done by Takashi, was not completely his desire. What he likes to do, which I take a lot of respect in, is he takes whatever idea or concept that the person he's doing the work for has, and he puts his own spin on it. He adds in the super flat theory that made him famous in the 90s, and he brings it into the piece that he's working on and the collaboration. Another fine example of this was the J Balvin collaboration that he did. Now, you mostly look at this and think, okay, it's obviously Takashi. You have the flowers, you have the colors, but there is that little imprint that you can tell J Balvin put a little bit of thought into, as well as the collaboration he recently had with Billie Eilish. So from, from all these different steps, you can see that he is taking, he is taking what artists that you and I love and giving them their own voice inside his style. Very unique style and his amazing style. Now, fast forwarding a bit to modern day, there was a recent post that 
was made by Travis Scott, where Takashi designed a special chain for him, for uh, the Jack Boys, that Travis Scott can advertise for, you know, upcoming albums and things of that nature. But it's interesting because there are a lot of really high profile jewelers in the rap game, most notably Ben Baller. But Travis didn't go to, didn't go to him. Now Takashi, again, did not build the piece himself, but he did design it. And the design, which I have right here for you, depicts a lot of, a lot of what you are most reminiscent about him for. A little more outlandish structures while still keeping congruent to the whole piece. And you can tell it's not ugly, but it's different. And his way to separate that in art is one of the things that I really admire about him because a lot of artists can do this as well. A lot of the high value artists. And for me, contemporary art being my favorite art style, when you're able to do that, it can show that you truly understand art and you understand the passion of it. So my favorite collaboration is what he's been able to do with Louis Vuitton. And I'll show some images right here over the screen. I'd like to add on the Kashi. His pieces are not cheap. I even included a link to his site where if you want to, you can peruse and look over a lot of the different options that he does include. However, again, they are, they are pretty pricey. So keep that top of mind. And for a lot of people who are mainly music fans, I see, I know I have a lot of music fans who are checking out these videos. I'm leaving also in the description and we'll show a little bit briefly here where you can find more affordable pieces by Takashi Murakami. You want to look at Depop and you want to look at Etsy. Now, when you're on Depop and Etsy, the first thing you want to do is just simply type in Takashi Murakami and you don't want to put a specific price range on any of it. The reason being is a lot of times you'll have people who are selling it super low so that they can get clicks and you're able to see it. Very common for those type of sites, you know, the Craigslist, the offer ups, things of that nature. And you also want to make sure that you have a good idea on the description, you pay attention because a lot of the pieces you're going to find are inspired of him. For example, you may find a Takashi Murakami canvas bag, but it's not made by him. It was hand painted by somebody or they used a sticker and had a heat press vinyl on top of it. Like something that anyone can make, which is fine if you just want something that's a replica of it. But if you want an actual piece, something that he actually did, you need to take whatever you find on a Depop or an Etsy. Then I recommend going to Google, typing in everything about that piece. What color is it? What words are on there? What size is it? When was it made? If it tells you that in the description on Depop or Etsy, then put that in there and make sure you get a valid piece because it's really something to behold when you have um, work from an artist, especially when it's high profile and talented. And from what I'm able to see in the interviews I've seen of him, pretty humble guy. You know, you can tell he's, uh, he's, he's reminiscent of Rick Rubin, very popular producer who worked with Jay-Z a lot and Kanye West on albums such as Jesus. Just very laid back, doesn't really care about anything else besides his art. I guess the final point that I'm going to leave you with is don't be afraid if you're an artist to try out new styles because you never know where it'll take you. Takashi's big breakthrough was with that super flat theory and his uh, strategic approach to developing that in the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles was what got him a lot of these bigger breakthroughs well before even meeting Kanye West and allowed him to translate his high and low art form in America, where it was really, really popular and still is to this day, back to Japan, where he has a beautiful studio and museum display in the heart of Tokyo, which I look forward to seeing one day when I make my way over there. Takashi Murakami is a household name for you, especially in hip hop. No, do feel free to check out a lot of the merch that he's been able to collaborate with. If you love Billie Eilish, you can find that. If you love Kanye, you'll find it. Kid Cudi, J Balvin, and the list goes on and on and on because he loves working with people, obviously, and he's going to continue to do that as well. But hey, that's all I had for this Why I Love series. Uh, very excited to do a Takashi Murakami. 
I would say he's, what? yeah, one of the first pure artists. Yeah, he was, a, no, he is the first pure uh, contemporary artist I have done. But make sure you stay tuned for the next one I do. I'm going to be diving into the man who is mentioned, who Takashi Murakami is mentioned to being very widely compared to, who is Andy Warhol and his pop art that he's been able to do and the connection he's been able to make in bridging contemporary art with a lot of new styles is just incredible to me. And we're going to talk about that in the next video, but that's it for this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content because we're going to make sure we keep this coming and we want to make sure that you know when each video drops. So appreciate the time. Peace out. And we'll see you next time.